Hi everybody, thanks for pressing play on the video today. It's Caroline here from craftycarolinecreates.com. Today's project is this really fun box. I'm really pleased with the way that this turned out. You can see the lid pivots um, and inside, when you flip that over, is a packet of Stamping Up Party Animal embellishments. These are really cute. There's a little hat and a little balloon. They're like little charms. And I sent a pack out of these in one of these boxes to everybody that shopped with me in December as a way of saying thank you for shopping with me. And they also received a copy of the Lucky Elephant stamp set, which is brand new in the new Spring Summer catalogue. Um, I know there's a lot of demonstrators out there that you can choose to shop with, so I'm always thankful for people to shopping with me. Um, so this is what I sent them. If you'd like to get something similar in the post next month, all you have to do is shop online. Caroline Helvey Wright at craftycarolinecreates.com and I just think this elephant is really lovely. I had a thing in my head that you could do something cool with those charms around his neck um, to make a really fun card. But anyway, um, shall we see how we made it? Okay, so let's start and do our stamping first and get that out of the way. So I'm starting with two mats. One measures two and a half inches square and the other measures two and a half inches by one and a half inches. I have mounted already from the fabulous Dragonfly Dreams, which is probably my favourite stamp set in the new catalogue. I'm not quite 100% sure yet, but it's one of them, definitely. And I've already mounted up these beautiful um, dots. And I've got some Garden Green ink. And here is my stamping mat. Okay. And just going to ink that up for the polymer, so it is always nice to have that mat underneath. And you'll see that this stamp will just fit on our square. There we go. Turn that round 90 degrees. I'm just going to stamp again. Okay. And then before I forget, I'm going to do that now. I'm just going to bring in my corner rounder. And I'm just going to round off one of those corners. Okay. Then I've got uh, my smaller piece and we're going to stamp on there, just do that once, okay? And then we're just going to round off the two top corners here and here, okay? So those are done, we'll put those to one side and use those in a minute. The other bit of stamping that we are going to do is, and I've used it before and I'm using it again because I love it, is this large stamp here. I just love the detailing on the wings. It is just oh, unbelievable. So I've got a scrap of Whisper White cardstock, which just fits my dragonfly on it. It does. Just a little tip, we are going to cut this out using these gorgeous detailed dragonfly thinlets. If you haven't seen these before, where have you been? They are beautiful. Oh. Don't rip it like that. You get some really lovely dies in here, and we're going to just use the outline die. But to make sure that you can cut out that tail neatly, just once you've mounted your stamp, just make sure that the die fits over it nicely like that, and then you'll be able to cut that out straight. I have done a few where the tail's been a bit wonky, so you haven't been able to cut it out properly. So let me stamp this up. And we're going to use Delightful Dijon. I think I said one of my New Year's resolutions to try and use some colours that I don't use quite as much. So, here we go. Delightful Dijon, inking that up. I'm just going to stamp that down. And then you can see how beautiful that is. The detailing on those wings is just amazing. Okay, And while we've got it, we might as well cut it out. Big shot in. Go. I've got the precision plate on here because I've been doing a lot of precision cutting because as you know a lot of stamping up gorgeous dies now are so intricate that the precision plate is used a lot but I'm just going to use it for my dragonfly and I'm just filling while I try and find a little bit of washing tape here it is <laughs> to just help me make sure that that dies in place um, if I wasn't being lazy I would have got my magnetic platform out but this is on the big shot, so let's just roll with it. So I'm just going to use um, a bit of washi tape to make sure that that stays in place as I roll it through the big shot. Okay, 
take that out, move that out of the way, and then I can just pop out that dragonfly. Beautiful, okay? And we'll keep that to one side for later. So just take this off, otherwise I will lose the die. I was dumpster diving the other day because I'd thrown a die out by mistake, so now I'm being a little bit more particular about making sure I put my dies away after I've used them. Okay. So, should we do some scoring and I'll show you how to make the box. Oh, scoreboard in. And I have a piece of cardstock here that measures seven inches by six and a half. Get a start, let me just lift you up. All of the dimensions, as always, are on craftycarolinecareers.com. Lift up the camera and we're gonna score seven inch side at half an inch. half an inch, um, three and a quarter inches, three and three quarter of an inch, uh, three quarters of an inch, and six and a half inches. Okay, turn it round and we're going to score it again at half an inch. We're going to score it at three and a quarter inches, and we're going to score it at six inches. Okay. We end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Quickly going to fold and burnish all of those score lines. is us done very quickly now we are going to do some cutting now it is a simple box to make but you just need to be a tiny little bit careful when you come to do the cutting make sure you've got your box orientated so that the the sort of half an inch pant strip that we've made here sits like this okay because when I was making them I started cutting with it that way and then I did it wrong so make sure you have this panel in the center and then it becomes really really simple the first thing we are going to do is cut up the edge here to the centre like that and then we're going to take that off like that and we're going to do that on the other side. So we're going past the first score line and up to the centre score line and then snipping it off. There we go. Okay. Then we are just going to cut out, cut up that little flap there and notch that out ever so slightly. There we go. Okay. Turn it round I find and we're going to cut up here, here, here and here and again just notch those out ever so slightly. These are quite little um, so don't notch them out too much but it does help when you're folding it up to do that okay and then the last thing we're going to do is we are going to very carefully cut all the way up this score line to there and then down this score line to the middle so all we are left with is a little bit of holding our box together just there okay so all the way up there like that and all the way on the other side. Make sure you stop when you hit the score line. Okay, you've got a little section in the center holding it all together. Let me pop that down so you can see what that looks like and you can see there, that's where we've cut up. Okay. Now, let's bring a folder, a folder, a corner rounder in and we're just gonna round off those two corners, just one there and one there okay and then we are going to use a one and a half inch circle punch we're going to cut a little half circle up this section and this section this means that when we build a box up and we've popped in our goodies we can um 
you can see what, what's inside and we can get it out easily. I have to admit I didn't do this um, for the ones I sent to my customers. This was sort of a modification that came to me after I'd made them and it's a bit harder to punch out once they're all erected but it's a really nice additional feature to have. Okay, so we're left with something that looks like that. So now it's time to start to build up our box. So how do we do that? It's a lot easier than you think, honestly. I'm going to start by putting some, oh, this fuse is broken. This fuse is working. I'm going to put a little bit of fuse along one strip there and one corner here. Okay. And then we are just going to fold, start with one end and fold that box up like that. Okay. Now tuck in these tabs. These might get in the way a little bit but fold make sure you fold in your tabs okay like that and there we've made up our sort of our, our inside of a box like that and then this bit folds up and goes around it as you can see just like that and that is then our, our folding mechanism so again just a little bit of fuse along the inside of one of these flaps like that and then what i find is makes the best solution is to as i said fold it up and glue it into place once you've wrapped it round like that and that is our basic box now one more modification i had for you over what i sent out to my customers is we're going to put a little pull string to make it easier to open so i've got my um this is my quarter of an inch, yeah, quarter of an inch circle punch, no, eighth of an inch circle punch. And I'm just going to punch a hole on this edge, so the edge without the holes, just about there. And we go. And this is going to, we're going to thread some ribbon through this in a second. But firstly, what we'll do is we will decorate it. So it's going to go like that. So let's bring in our pieces that we did earlier. So this where we did our rounded corner is obviously going to match up with our rounded corner there. Can you see that? Okay, so I'm going to put some, I'm just going to use fuse because it's to hand, but you could use tumble. You just need to be careful if you're using fuse that you get it in the right place first because there is no mercy, no wig room at all. There we go. Okay. And then this piece is going to go inside like that. Okay, and just gives that little bit of extra decoration when you open up the box, basically. There we go. Okay. This hole that we made, let's put the ribbon on there now. I'm going to use the new... Um, where's it gone? can't find it. Hmm. I was going to use the very vanilla new ribbon but let's use this one. This is the celebration beautiful silver metallic ribbon and what we need to do is we are going to push this through the hole from the back so let's use um, the scoring tool is quite good for this. The narrow end of your scoring tool should push that through the hole. There we go. You can pull oh, should hopefully it definitely works with the other ribbon i've tried it this one's shredding a little bit remember this is ribbon that you can get for free when you buy anything over 45 pound from stamping up um, at the moment hmm, not sure that no, that's not that's not working we need to get this ribbon the problem with it is lovely but it does fray a little bit so no problem let me find the other ribbon i wanted to use here it is, it was hiding from me. So this is the ribbon that I wanted to use. This is the very vanilla, um, what do they call it? Quarter of an inch satin ribbon? Yeah, quarter of an inch satin ribbon. It's really beautiful. Um, so this we are then going to push it through that hole. There we go, that goes through much easier, doesn't it? Then the other one was just a little bit too thick. And then we're gonna tie, just, trim that down 
and tie the ends off inside in a knot. Okay, so pull that in a knot and then what you could see is we can trim the other end down, pull that taut and then when we close it up we can then use that as a little pull to open a box. Yep, very nice idea. And then all we're going to do to finish it off is stick on our dragonfly. We're going to do with dimensionals just to give a little bit of um, oh dimension. Mm. <laughs> well done, Caroline. A little bit of dimension. So it looks like the dragonfly has just literally landed on a box. Let's put that on like that. It does overhang the box a little bit because I wanted to make it the right dimension to fit in those embellishments. Um, let me grab them, pop them in. And that pops over like that, um, says it fits them perfectly. But I did think after I did that, these are gonna go in the post. So if these got a little bit tatty, I'm really sorry, but hopefully you really like the gift and you especially like the box, because I, I think the box is pretty special. I really like it. I think I'm going to try and do it in some of the different dimensions because it's a, a really good box. Okay, well thanks for watching and remember if you'd like to receive a gift in the post next month all you need to do is shop online with me, Caroline Helby Wright at craftycarolinecreates.com. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.